One of these men is the captain of the French liner Liberté. What is your name, please? My name is Captain Georges Croisil. What is your name, please? My name is Captain Georges Croisil. What is your name, please? My name is Captain Georges Croisil. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Captain Georges Croisil and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Carter. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Tony, first in the world of home beauty. Tony and all its wonderful products have made it possible and easy for every woman to find natural loveliness right in the comfort of her own home. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Miss Monique Van Voren. Next, Mr. Don Amici. Then, Miss Kitty Carlisle. And finally, Mr. Tom Poston. Always nice to welcome back a very lovely old friend, and uh, that you have become, Monique. We're happy to have you back with us again tonight. It's a great pleasure to be back. Now, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it? I, Captain Georges Croisil, am Commodore of the French Line Fleet and captain of the famous transatlantic liner Liberté. I started my career as an apprentice seaman, was a lieutenant on the ill-fated liner Normandy, and have served on banana boats, freighters, and on liberty ships during the war. In the fall of 1961, I will take command of the new flagship of the French Line, the longest ship ever to be built, the 55,000-ton liner France. Signed, Captain Georges Croisil. <laughs> Here we have three gentlemen, as you heard and observed, panel, all claiming to be Georges Croisil, captain of the French liner Liberté. All set, gentlemen? If so, let's begin our first round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. I'm furious. I've never been on the Liberté. I'm longing to go. I could have nailed all three of them. <laughs> no, number one, uh, can you tell me the name of the Commodore of the United States? No, I do not know. Do you know number two? I think it is Captain Anderson. Uh, number three, tell me, where does the uh, Liberté sail from? From Le Havre. And uh, where does it arrive? And it goes I mean the pier, the number of the pier. Pier 88. Uh, number one, what is the name of the hat that the little French seamen wear? The beret. What is the name of the pom-pom on top? The pompon rouge. <laughs> number two, where is the French <laughs> Naval Academy? There is uh, one in Brest. Uh, is there another one? There are some for the merchant service. Tom Poston. Thank you, bud. Gosh, Kitty, I thought sure you'd be on that Liberté. <laughs> I didn't know why. I thought you'd really have to. Uh, number three, what is the best port on the Cherbourg Peninsula? Port of Cherbourg. Number two, uh, what is the best port on the Cherbourg Peninsula? The port of Cherbourg. Could you tell me, number two, how many feet are there in a fathom? In a fathom, there are six feet. Uh, number one, what is a four-rigger? Are you it's familiar with sailing ships? Sailing ship? boat. Number two, are you f familiar with the sailing ships? Sailing no, ship? sir, I'm sorry, I'm not. Uh, number one, what is the limit that a pilot boat leaves from in the, when it leaves New York Harbor? Then, in the port of New York, we take two pilots, one from Ambroy, to near the pier, and the uh, second one to go to the pier. Monique? Uh, number two, where is the dining room of the Liberté located compared to the movie house? It is below me. Num <laughs> <laughs> it depends on which way you're looking. <laughs> <laughs> number three, do you serve salmon souffle? No. Number two, I didn't... Salmon souffle, souffle au saumon. 
Oh, we? Oui, I think we do. Uh, number one, what happened to the Normandy during the war? Then the Normandy burned and capsized in New York. In what year, please? In uh, February 1942. Number two, how often, how many times a week do they show the movie on the Liberté during the crossing? During the five-day crossing, how many times do they show the movie? There is a movie every day. Don? Uh, number one, what was the Liberté called before she was the Liberté? It was Europa. Number three, what is the tonnage of the Liberté? 57,000 tons. Number one, where is the chapel on the Liberté? Chapel is on the sun deck. Number uh, uh, two, uh, when you leave here, what time do you sail from New York? 11.30. What time do you arrive at, uh, at Le Havre on the fifth day, when, uh, on a normal crossing? We arrive on the sixth day. At what time? In the afternoon. That's it, panel. Time to vote without consultation, which is the usual regulation. Mark your ballots, if you will, please, and select thereby number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers, of course, will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Everybody mark their ballots? Okay, Monique, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number two because I... I was on the Liberté once, although I never met any of uh, the crew, but I had salmon to flay, and I happened to love it very much, and he knows what it was about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don, what about your taste bud? Well, I, uh, I voted for number two also. It's uh, kind of a guess. I thought the Liberté really docked at about eight in the morning, if I'm not mistaken, on the sixth day generally, but I'm probably wrong. I don't know. Okay, Kitty? I voted for number two. Um, he knew about the Commodore of the United States, whose name is Anderson, and um, on the basis of that information, I voted for it. Tom, your selection. I voted for number two, also. <laughs> I was disappointed in Don Amici. I thought he was going to nail those guys the way he did the horse player, lad. The horse player. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we have it. We've all made up our minds, and if you've been playing along at home with us, why, well, let's see how well you did as we discover how well we did in finding out which of these three gentlemen is the captain of the Liberté. Will the real Captain Georges Croisille please stand up? Sir, thank you very much. Uh, you may be seated if you will. So number one, may we ask you your real name and what you really do, please? My real name is Rémi Lemaire. I am a stockbroker with Bates and Company in their Fifth Avenue office in New York. Thank you, sir. And number three, may I ask you the same question, your real name and what you do? My name is Armand Chen, and I own the Armand Chen Fur Salon in New York City. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we check our score, we find that the uh, panel did extremely well to start off. Don't get swell heads now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and for you gentlemen, since there were no incorrect votes, nonetheless, Tony has a gift for you of $150. We hope you enjoyed your visit with us. On your way out, you will find there is for your ladies a gift package of all of Tony's wonderful products. Good night, hope you had fun, and good luck. Thank you. All right, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Pat Fontaine. What is your name, please? My name is Pat Fontaine. What is your name, please? My name is Pat Fontaine. Again, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit, panel? I, Pat Fontaine, have been a radio and television performer for the past seven years. I have done women's programs, children's programs, teenage programs, commentary, and commercials. For the past 18 months, however, I have been specializing in one type of program. I am on the air three times a day, five days a week, and once on Saturdays. I am the TV weather girl for station KMOX-TV in St. Louis, Missouri. Signed, Pat Fontaine. Three attractive young ladies. You heard them all claiming to be Pat Fontaine, TV weather girl at KMOX TV. Are you comfortable, ladies? Let's play our game and start this round with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, Bud. 
uh, Miss Fontaine, number three. What is a lime squall? I'm asking you a meteorological question. Do you know? Well, I should qualify. I'm not a meteorologist, but I believe a lime squall would be any thunder shower line moving into an area. Yeah, well. <laughs> Are you a meteorologist, a meteorolo meteorologist, <laughs> Miss Fontaine number two? Well, uh, no, I, I suppose I would say a, a line squall is a front cloud that precedes some of the others. Number one, are you a meteorologist? No, and I agree with both of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the weather expert if I ever heard one. Yes, it is. <laughs> number one, uh, Miss Fontaine number one, what is a lavalier? I believe it's something you wear around your neck, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what, is, what would it be in Monique? Okay. Uh, number two, uh, it says in the affidavit that you are from St. Louis. What, what street is the Chase Hotel on? Uh, well, I think the Chase Hotel is uh, near Market Street. Mm. Number three, what is the name of the hotel right next door to the Chase Hotel? Oh, that would be the um, Park Plaza. Uh, number one, what are the bordering states of Missouri? Uh, on the north would be Idaho, across the Mississippi. On the east would be Illinois. On the west would be Kansas. And on the south, golly, I think it's Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> number two, what is the name of the airport in St. Louis? Uh, Lambert. Number three? Lambert. Number one, um, what is the usual length of the the regulation length of a TV commercial? Oh, I think that would be regulation. I mean, they are 45-minute ones and minute-and-a-half ones, too. 45 seconds, I assume you meant there. 45, 45 seconds. seconds yeah. There are those that seem like 45 minutes. Are there. Are there. <laughs> <laughs> Don Amici, uh, number uh, three, what uh, state is East St. Louis in? East St. Louis is in Illinois. Number two, uh, where is the airport? Well, the airport is... Uh, very far, I have about 45 minutes from the city. What state is, uh, is it in? Uh, Lambert Airport is in uh, Illinois, isn't it? Uh, number one, what street is the uh, Catholic Cathedral on? The Catholic Cathedral? I believe it's Washington. Uh, number two, what is the limit of a, uh, of a commercial for a 15 minute show? Well, actually it'd probably be a minute commercial. Number three? I don't know. During a five-minute weather show, the limit there is one. I believe in a 15-minute show, it's permissible to have more than one one minute. Kitty? Number one, what is the dew line? The dew line, that's the distant early warning line around the Arctic Circle. And number two, do you know what it's for? Uh, yes, it's to determine how much moisture would be uh, between the Arctic Circle and the equator. Number three, can you tell me the name? You have a very famous newspaper in uh, St. Louis. What is the name of it? Um, the uh, Post-Dispatch. Uh, number one, would you say to me in those dulcet tones that you use in your commercial, the temperature tomorrow will be normal? <laughs> the right one? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I don't believe there's any normal temperature. For I think you're right there. <laughs> Will you please <laughs> your ballot? And select, of course, number one, number two, or number three. Okay, has everyone voted? Monique, for whom did you vote? Uh, I voted for number three because, well, I, I've been working in St. Louis, and right next to the Chase Hotel is the Park Plaza, and uh, I thought she knew where it was. So okay. this is why I voted for number three. Good. Don? I voted for number three also. I thought she answered all the questions uh, correctly. How about your selection, Kitty? <laughs> I voted for number three. Uh, well, number one knew about the dew line, but, and I didn't ask her what it meant, but number two obviously did not know exactly what it meant, and I thought that number three did know most of the questions, and the park plaza is indeed next to, and the post-dispatch, and all the questions were properly answered, I thought. And Tom, <laughs> your vote. Well, I, I, number three didn't say anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this may be an absolute bust. <laughs> I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell when number three said anything wrong. But I thought that Idaho was strange for a northern state bordering Missouri. And that number one said it may have been a mistake. And I thought that the dew line answer of number two gave was well moist, highly suspect. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I voted for number three. She also knew a lot of 
answers. All right, there we have it. Now let's see if we knew the answers. And whether you did too as we discover which one of these charming ladies is the real TV weather girl. So may I ask the real Pat Fontaine to please stand up. Well, you're really doing well tonight. I tell you, swell head or no swell head, you're doing swell. Number one, could you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Well, I'm a Pat, too, but Edwards and I uh, run the service department for the American Home Center here in New York. Thank you. And number two, would you tell us your real name and what you do? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Mary Ann Cohan, and I actually am a jewelry demonstrator for various department stores in New York City. Uh, I think you panel might be interested to know that uh, Pat, despite some 16 television shows a week, still has time to be a real active and loving mother to five children. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lovely family, Pat. Just uh, for the record, because I drew whenever there are kids around anyway, uh, how old are they? Blast, can I lie? Uh, you, you see, at this time... No, you're the real one. You can't lie. I can't lie. No. <laughs> I have two children who are 11, but one will turn 12 next month, mm -hmm. and one 13-year-old, a 14-year-old, and one will be 7 in January. Uh -huh. You see, it is easier to lie at certain times in the year. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you, I have one 21, one 19, and one 17, so you have nothing to worry about. Not the way you look. <laughs> All right, check the score now and find it was unanimous again, and so $150 there. Challengers, I hope you enjoyed your visit to us. On your way out, you'll find a gift package of Tony's wonderful products for you. Good night. It was fun having Thanks. you here. Thank Good you luck. Very much. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Tony Madigan. What is your name, please? My name is Tony Madigan. What is your name, please? My name's Tony Madigan. Follow along with your copies of this affidavit, if you please, panel. I, Tony Madigan, am Australian. I have traveled all over the world. At home in Australia, I have worked as a cigarette salesman and a kangaroo hunter. In Sweden, I worked as a timber cutter. While in this country, I've been working as a model. Mainly, however, my interest is in boxing. I have won titles in Australia, England, Canada, and Mexico. At present, in my division, I am the world's diamond belt champion. Signed, Tony Madigan. Okay. If you're comfortably seated, gentlemen, we will uh, find out as much as we can about which of these gentlemen is the real uh, Tony Madigan, world's amateur boxing champion. And let's start this questioning with Monique. Monique Van Voren. Uh, number one. What is the name of the head of the state? Of Australia? Yes. Uh, the Prime Minister is Mr. Menzies, Mr. R. G. Menzies. Number two, in the affidavit it says you <coughs> are interested in boxing. Uh, what are the boxing rules being taken from? Who is the...? Uh, the Marquis of Queensbury. Uh, number three, when you do some wood cutting, what is the in instrument you use? Uh, it was a power saw. A what? A power saw. Oh, a power saw. <laughs> a power saw. Number two. I said a parasol. Parasol. <laughs> That's only when it's sunny. <laughs> Number two. Uh, what is the population of Australia? Uh, Ten million. Number three. Don Amici. Uh, number one. What's your weight? I fight at 160. What? 160? What do you weigh, number two? About 178. And what do you weigh, number three? 158. What, uh, what, what is the name of your uh, uh, weight class? Middleweight. I beg your pardon? Middle, middleweight. Middleweight. What's the, what's the class above middleweight? Light heavy. Uh, you mean amateur or pro? Pros. Light heavy. Number two, what's the class uh, below middleweight? Uh, number three, what's the class below middleweight? Well done. Uh, number one, what is the top three-year-old horse race in Australia? Top three-year-old horse yes. race? Melbourne Cup. 
I beg your pardon? Melbourne Cup. Uh, number, uh, number three, what is the, uh, uh, what is the name of the uh, champion before the last heavyweight champion of the world? Floyd Patterson. Kitty? Number one, as a mother, I'm very interested in how the kangaroos hold their young in their tummies. <laughs> Not in their tummies, Kitty. Yes, here, in their pouches. That's different. <laughs> ah, because well, as a mother, one is always wondering where the children are. It's a good thing to know where they are. How sure. long do the kangaroos hold their young in their pouches? Uh, till they're, they never come out until they're a month old, and then they go in and out for a couple of months. Oh, just for a couple of months? As long as they fit. <laughs> <laughs> How fast is a kangaroo number two? <laughs> A kangaroo could travel about um, 30 miles an hour. Number three, uh, can you teach a kangaroo to box? Yes, you can. Have you ever taught one? No, I haven't. It's not dangerous? Uh, it can be because they're back legs. They can hit you with a back leg. and it's... Yeah, Don't put the gloves on those. Tom. Thank you, boy. Uh, do you know what, uh, number three, do you know what the Australian rhyming expression is for a policeman? For a policeman. Yeah. He's a... Do you know the rhyming, uh, the rhyming uh, expressions in Australia, number two? Uh, John Hopper. Uh, could you tell me, number two, who is Bob Taft? Not the uh, late senator. Do you know who Bob Taft is in New York? Do you have... Taft Hotel? Right, that's it. It's time to vote once again. So will you mark your ballots and see if your luck holds for this round two panel? Voting for number one, number two, or number three. All set. You're shooting for a perfect score now, panel. Let's see how well you do this time. Oh, wait a minute. Everybody vote before I call on the first one. All, All right. ballots must be marked. All set? Okay, Monique, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number one. <laughs> he seems to know an awful lot about kangaroo, and I'm sure it'll help Kitty Carlisle and her children. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Don? I voted for number one, and I wish I had a good reason. I don't, I don't have a good reason. Pure guess on my part. Kitty? Well, I was following uh, Polly's uh, method, and I voted for number three because he said the least of anybody. All right, and Tom? <laughs> I voted for number two. Where are we? Oh, we got everybody this time. Well, yes, you really split. Okay, I voted for number two because he did know at least one rhyme for a for a policeman, a copper. It uh, changes a lot, I know, from time to time, but we'll see. Okay, there we have it. Let's see how well we did this time. First time the panel has split his vote, and we'll find out right now which one of these three gentlemen is the real world's amateur boxing champion. So, will the real Tony Madigan please stand up? Who voted for him? Which one have you voted for? Was it Tom Tom Monique? Tom did. Tom, Tom, Tom did. Tom did. Kitty Congratulations. Have a seat, sir, if you will. And congratulations. <laughs> Number one, tell us your real name, please, and what you do. My name's Don Hansley, and I'm a journalist for an Australian organization here in New York. Thank you very much. And number three, may we have your real name, and what you do? Uh, uh, my name is Peter Raynor, and I'm a sculptor. We thank you. And we thank all three of you for being with us tonight. And since there were this time three incorrect votes at $250 each, that's a total of $750. And Tony, a happy Christmas coming up to you gentlemen, with your shopping at least. And on your way out, a gift package of Tony's fine products for your ladies. And good night and good luck to you. Well, I guess that's all we have time for tonight, except I want to remind all of you and all of you to watch our own lovely Polly, who will be singing on the Bell Telephone Hour tomorrow night. So don't forget to watch for him. Monique, again, thanks for coming back to us. Very and I guess that's pleasure. it, panel. No further vital statistics this week. Good night. <laughs> good, good night. Good night, Bud. Bud Collier saying good night from the Tony Company and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is the Mark Goodson Bill Johnson production in association with the CBS Television Network.